Hi again folks, how's all doing? Got another Hornby Mallard here. This was sent to me by a chap called Paul. Um, he said it doesn't get run very often, um, but the last time he tried to run it, it wouldn't run at all. Um, so let's turn on the power. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's trying. But it's not very well. Yeah. It's pulling up to 500 milliamps. Well, it is running, uh, just not very well. So we'll back into the shed and we'll see if we can sort it out. Alrighty, well then, uh, this is a locomotive driven A4. All the other Hornby A4s I've looked at have been tender driven, um, apart from the old double O ones. Um, I've looked at a couple of Bachmann split chassis locomotive driven ones, but not uh, one of these you know, more modern Hornby models. So condition of this looks pretty good. We've got a missing handrail on the tender there. Um, there's one on that side, but there's one missing there. We'll maybe see if we can put something in its place. Everything else seems fine. Uh, I think what's wrong with this is a severe case of neusitis. It's uh, just not been used enough. It's kind of just seized up a bit. Uh, you know, the, the lubrication will dry up and it'll just start to gunk up and it just won't work very well. Um, and the fact that Paul said it wasn't running when he tried it, and I get it, and it does run, uh, just not very well, kind of backs that up. Um, you know, sometimes it'll run, sometimes it won't. Give it a shugle in the post, and it'll show us uh, signs of life. So, we shall open it up, and we'll give it a good clean out, fresh lubrication, check it over, and I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's just get the tender off first of all. So yeah, I think I'll see if I can fit a wee bit of guitar string or something in there just as a makeshift handrail. So, this doesn't look as if it's one with the horrible clips on the cylinders. Um, now that that's off, there's a screw at the front there. We'll undo that which has now dropped down into the body. <laughs> uh, is that going to come out? Kind of looks like it. Yep. Nice and easy. All right, so what have we got? Um, nice big flywheel. It's DCC ready. It's got a bit of fluffage on this crank here. I don't know if you can see, but there's what looks like pet hairs and stuff down the back of the wheels. The pickups are all okay. Wheels need a bit of a clean. But yeah, seems fine otherwise. So normally there's a little screw here and the top of the gearbox comes off. So I think to get into the gearbox, we're going to have to remove the motor. This bracket here that holds the motor in place is held in with a screw there and a screw there. So if we undo that, it should allow the motor to come out. But I think the motor's held in place with black tack. Undo that screw. So that loosens that. That loosens the motor which should come out like so. That allows that to come out. So the lubrication on the bottom gear looks okay. Also looks okay in the gearbox. Let's just lift that gear out. Yeah, that all looks fine. Um, so I'm wondering if the problem is, is with the axles. Let's just leave this gear out and we'll pop this on the test track just to see if this free wheel's okay. Have you got stiff wheels? No, that's fine. Interesting. So the lubrication looks okay. Why wasn't this running too well? I'm beginning to suspect that this motor, there we go, yeah, I'm beginning to suspect the motor. 
I think it's on its way out. Oh, the wee bit of smell of burning coming off this now. Yeah, I think the motor's dead. Right, I think what I'll do is I'll desolder the wires to test the motor independently. Um, but I think the motor's had it. We'll need to see if we can get some kind of replacement for it. That's full power and it's slowly coming to a stop. Deed motor. Fortunately, Paul wasn't in a hurry for this back, so I've got plenty of time to source a replacement. Right, beer o'clock. Okay, so this is a good few days later. Uh, Peter Spears did have a, a replacement motor for this, and here it is. Uh, so what I need to do is remove the flywheel and the worm gear and shove them on this. Nice and simple, <laughs> if only. So this flywheel is going to be a pain in the neck to get off because of the uh, the plastic mount here. It's in the way of, of putting uh, all the pullers I have in. Um, but I did a bit of digging around online and I've, I've bought another puller to add to my collection. Um, but it didn't quite fit either, but I've ground down the top of it here to make it thinner. It was far too thick, um, but it's, it's the right width this way to just fit in there. So now that I've ground it down, it does fit. So we should be able to pull this off. Just get it in the right position. Right, okay, here we go. There it is. Can I use this? No, I can't use that for that, so I'll need to use a different puller for this. Let's try this one. Yeah, that'll do it, I think. Or is that pin going to be enough? So the pin on that puller isn't long enough, but fortunately the thread on this one is the same, so I can use this one, which has a, a longer pin on the top. So, let's see if this does it. Ooh, it's still a bit short. Got a wee crack there, but no, that's not going to do it either. Right, I've got a wee bit of nail here. Put that down in there. Now, um, let me go back to the original one. So you can see there's a bit of nail in there, just... Uh, acting as an extension onto the puller. And there we go. It's off. So, I need to fit the worm gear onto there. That'll have to go onto there. And then we have to put that onto there. Now I'll have to find a way to squeeze uh, both the worm gear and that flywheel on. So this is the clamp that's always worked in the past for this kind of thing. It's a, a mitre clamp. Right, so that'll sit in there nicely. And then we can squeeze that together. I'm kind of conscious that's probably the worm gear I'm squeezing on here and not the flywheel, but that's fine. We'll deal with one at a time. Oh, that has squeezed that on. Okay, I think we might be good at that. We need to squeeze the worm gear on a bit more. Right, I'm going to pull this flywheel off again um, and get the worm gear in the right position because it's it matters more um, than the position of the flywheel. So let's just pull that off. And then we can uh, get this into its correct position. Right. That's better, I think. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Push this flywheel back on. Mm, interesting that I just pushed on this time. I think we'll give this worm gear a clean and I'll get some grease on it uh, 
that wants to go there, that wants to go there. Okay, before I connect that up, we'll uh, apply a bit of power direct to the motor and see what happens. Right, let's see what happens. Apply a bit of power. There we go. Seems fine. So, now I need to connect it up. Some solder on there and on there. Oh, apologies. I thought I had my endoscope switched on there, but I didn't. Uh, but I've soldered that on. So, this should now run. Let's give it a go. Mm -hmm. Right, okay then. Right, put some tape across there just to keep those wires in place. Alright, I think we're pretty much done. So there we go, a new motor fitted. I think this should be okay now. I've given it all a good clean. Um, right, okay, we'll get the body on. There really isn't an awful lot of clearance between the inside of the body shell and the rods. Hopefully it'll be okay. While I was waiting on the, the motor coming, I've uh, fitted a bit of guitar string as a handrail into the tender there. Um, just before we fit this tender, just noticed a fair bit of fluffage in here. Oh dear, oh dear. There's no pickups in the tender, but let's get rid of some of that. You can see in here an awful lot of fluffage. Dear me. Yeah, I think we'll have to get these wheels out. Let's take out the coupling. The wheel's a little screw down in there. It should then come out. Actually, I don't think I needed to take the tender body off, but Never mind. Right. That's going to lift out. Wow. Yeah, that's going to take a bit of cleaning up. But that's what happens when you're on on carpets or dusty floors. So, lift the wheels out. We'll give this a brush out with a monkey brush. And then we'll get rid of all the fluff on the axles. This is one of the worst pieces of fluffage I've come across. Right, okay, I think we'll give these wheels a bit of a scoosh and a clean up. Give the inside of this a bit of a scoosh as well. Right, okay, tender defluffed. We'll pop the wheels back in. We'll get some fresh oil on them. So they're a lot better than they were. Don't like it when tenders do that. Right, this should go though. Here we go. Right, okay.
Let's go and pull out the shed. Okay, here comes my lord. Well, here we go, that's Paul's Mallard running again. Um, so, yeah, initially I thought this was just going to need the usual clean-up and uh, re-lubricate, but uh, I think I should have realised that there was something else up when the, the amateur was reading about 500 milliamps. Um, it's just not very often I come across a, you know, a duff motor. Um, fortunately, I was able to get a replacement, and uh, with a bit of fiddling with the worm gear and the flywheel, I got it fitted okay, and it runs fine now. Uh, some serious fluffage though, especially on the tender. Uh, try not to run your locomotives on carpets or dusty floors, folks. Uh, fitted a makeshift handle on the tender using a bit of guitar string. And there we go, job done. Uh, Paul did specifically ask if I uh, made a video of this to run this with the Airfix Class 31. So uh, I duly obliged. Uh, right, I shall get this packed up and sent back to Paul. And we'll see what's next. Catch us later, folks.